Hello children, welcome back to your science class. As you all know, we are learning chapter 9 of your NCRT textbook, Soil. Let us begin today's class. Let us recall what we have learned in this chapter. We have seen the introduction to this chapter and also we have learned how soil is an essential factor in supporting the existence of life. Today, let us learn about soil formation and soil profile. What is soil profile? Soil profile is the different layers of the soil which can be viewed in vertical section of a ground level of the ground or the soil layer here in the image you can see that this is one of the vertical sections of the ground and these different layers are explained here that the uppermost layer is the leaf litter and then followed by humus and then humus mixed with minerals and then the next layer will be the minerals with very little humus and at the last the layer shown is as bedrock. So today in today's class let us learn and understand these different layers. So where and when can we see these soil layers? They can be seen in a recently dug ditch or while digging a well, while laying roads on a hill. They can be seen on the roadsides, near a steep bank river, river bank and while laying a foundation of a building. Children, at some construction areas, we can see big and deep ditches formed for laying the foundations yes so these are the places where you can usually see and study the soil profile so uh, we have understood that soil profile means different layers of the soil but how is this soil formed now let us see how soil is formed the soil formation is called weathering weathering means the breakdown of rocks by wind, water, climate, which is seen over several years. Um, we can understand soil profile by doing a small activity by ourselves. So in the image here, you can see there is a glass tumbler or a glass bottle. All you have to do is take a little soil crumble it into powder not fine particles uh, just crumble it to powder so that it does not have any lumps do not uh, crumble it to its minute particles just see that they should not contain any lumps now take a glass tumbler fill this glass tumbler with three fourth of water and then you have to add the soil you have collected which does not have any lumps in it into this glass. Now stir this soil well with a stick in the glass tumbler. Let it stand undisturbed for some time. That means you do not touch it. Just keep, it, keep this glass tumbler aside for a few minutes or a minimum for a half an hour. Okay children? So this is the activity that we do by ourselves to understand the soil profile. So after keeping it aside for some time, what do we observe? We see different layers of soil particles in the glass tumbler. And these layers are formed based on the size of these soil particles. On the top layer of this glass tumbler, you see dead rotting matter of leaves and small animals. 
very small minute microorganisms that are floating on the water. This is called humus. In the image, you can see that humus is the small minute plants or small worms. They are usually dead. So the definition of humus is, it is the rotting dead matter in the soil. Now let us study different layers of this soil. We have seen this or understood this by performing an activity. But on the whole, how does the mother earth's crust has been divided, uh, divided into different layers of soil? Let us study it now. These layers of soil are called horizons and each horizon differs in its texture. That means how you feel when you touch it. It can be soft, it can be hard, you can find some rocks in it or sometimes very soft soil you can find, some sand you can find. This is called texture. And these layers also differ in colors, the depth. They, each layer is not of equal depth and the chemical composition. So here is an image for your clear understanding. Here are all the different layers of soil. That is, the first one is humus, which you have already learned. They lay on the top surface of the soil. And then comes the A horizon. That means it is the top soil. It is very rich with minerals and nutrients. A horizon is followed by B horizon. It is a, a place where it holds the roots of large trees. Big trees roots extend to this layer. And then the third layer is the C horizon. It is also called the parent material. In this you see weathered rock fra fragments. And then at the last is the bedrock. That means these are this layer is completely filled with hard rocks. Okay. So now let us study about each layer of soil. So humus. Humus is the dead rotting matter of soil. Yes. As we have already learned, it is the topmost layer, sometimes mixed with the A horizon. Next comes the A horizon, which is also called as topsoil. It is the topmost layer or the uppermost layer of soil, uh, which is rich with humus, minerals, nutrients, uh, um, where they provide these nutrients to the plants. Small plants usually extend their roots to this, to this layer, means the topsoil, and it is very dark in color. It is soft, porous, and retain more water. That means uh, the roots can uh, use most of their water from this layer. It also provides shelter for many living organisms. Not only the humus, the dead organic matter, but many small worms, earthworms, beetles, etc. Like we studied in the earlier class, many small living organisms are present in this layer. This is a horizon which is also called as topsoil. And then comes the B horizon which is also called subsoil. This is uh, the area where large trees roots get extended and here the amount of humus and mineral uh, humus is less and minerals is more yes and this is generally harder means not so soft in texture when compared to a horizon means the top soil this layer the subsoil is usually harder and more compact that means this is not a looser soil it is very tightly packed layer with soil 
Next comes the sea horizon which is also called the parent rock or the parent material. This is the th third layer of soil. This layer is usually made up of small lumps of rocks with cracks and crevices. That means this is not tightly packed with only rocks. It also contains loose rocks. They are segregated uh, with small spaces and uh, all these rocks have cracks within them and sometimes water penetrate up to this layer also. But this is not uh, much rich with any humus. So this is the sea horizon and also called as parent rock or parent material. And the last layer of the soil is the hard layer and this is called the bedrock. And this layer is present beneath the sea horizon. That means the parent material or the looser rocks. This is completely a strong hard rock layer where you cannot dig this with a spade. You have seen sometimes where they use drilling machines to dig deep layers of soil for laying bores or for constructing wells. Yes because this layer cannot be dig with a spade. So these are all the layers of soil. Yes, the, let us once again recall these layers. The topmost layer is called the topsoil, which also has a layer of humus on it. And it is also called A horizon. And then comes the B horizon, which is called the subsoil. And then comes the parent material, which is the sea horizon. And at the last uh, layer of the soil is called the bedrock. Uh, today we have learned about soil formation and the soil profile. Uh, and uh, we have already discussed an activity about this. Here there is an activity for you. That is the same activity which, have, which we have discussed in today's class. You will perform this activity and you will write down all the steps you have done during performing this activity and you will draw your glass tumbler as it is which you have observed and label it. If uh, there is any chance you can color the diagram you are drawing after the activity. So this is your first activity that is testing for the composition of soil. That means you will see uh, what are the layers of soil you can see the, in the soil you have found near your house. And the second activity is here you can see a diagram where they are not labeled. So you have to label them and you have also write their characteristics. For example, the topmost layer is the topsoil which also, uh, above which there is a layer of dead organic matter. What is it called? What are its characteristics? Next, here each layer you have to describe, label and describe them. That is the activities for today. So you have, you have two activities for today which are very easy and very interesting. If you have any doubts, you can replay the video and understand the concept better. Thank you children. We will continue the class in the next science class. Thank you.